Good evening. Good evening once again. I hope you remember what we were discussing on yesterday's video. We were discussing on a problem in rotation. We have already started with the chapter on rotation. Right. My name is Ratan Rao, and I teach physics for an international school. And my hobby is do problems related to physics. And uh, with my experience, I thought. Maybe these kinds of videos would be very useful wherein I spot out the mistakes which the students make and then understand what is the reason for making these mistakes. So which I call this as misconceptions. So far, I think more than 50, 60 videos have been done. And uh, my target is to make something like around 365 videos. It's a challenge that I have made of thinking of, okay, how many different mistakes students can do. Hope one day or the other, it might help all of our student community to understand this and do better in their future examinations. Okay, now let us begin with a bang. Okay, so a disk rotates about its axis. So what is the topic here? The topic here is difference between the radial and the tangential axis. So this is one of the biggest problems everyone faces in rotation. Radial and tangential, two types of accelerations. Let us see. So it is rotate about its axis with a constant angular acceleration of four radians per second. This alpha is given to you. Disc rotates. I always try to put across a diagram. Disc rotates. How does it rotate? It's not given with a constant acceleration about its axis. Okay. About its axis. About its axis. Omega. Okay. Find the radial and tangential acceleration of a particle at a distance of one centimeter. At a distance of one centimeter from the axis at the end of the first second. See, two parameters. See, this is distance. R is given. First to second, time is given. T equal to 1 is given. After the disk starts rotating, after the disk starts, which means what? Initially, it was at rest. Okay. So, therefore, it's angular velocity, initial angular velocity equal to 0. Now, what is that you need to find? Radial and tangential. The student answers it like this. So, he says, okay, see, anyway, acceleration is given to me here. Now, what is so special I need to find? There's nothing. Disk is rotating with uniform acceleration. If it is rotating, it keeps on rotating and it, it's not going to stop anyway. See, it, now nowhere it says it's stopping. So therefore, the axle, angular acceleration is going to be there. Okay, that's what we know. So if that is the case, now how do I find this? This is a bigger question. Now towards it, what acceleration is given here? Is it radial or is it tangential? Or is it both? Okay. So this is not very much clear to student community. And they make lots of mistakes here. So therefore, this is a misconception. This is incorrect. Now, let us understand what is radial. What is radial acceleration? See, you have a particle here. You have a particle here. Now, let us say I take it at the rim. Okay, this is, this is one centimeter here. Now, what is the velocity at this point? The velocity at this point is like this, right? Tangential angle. Now, after one second, right, where is this particular point? Let us say point is here. Where is this point? The point is somewhere over here. Okay. So, this is point B over here. Now, what is the velocity? Velocity is once again like this. Now, why tangential? If you ask me, then it is like, okay, I have a particle when I start whirling it like this. Now what can happen? The particle starts moving around in a circular path like this, right? And now, if suppose if the string here is cut, now what can happen? The particle moves in a straight line tangential to the direction of rotation, right? So therefore, now here also, the direction of velocity is nothing but the direction of the particle which is going. So this will be your velocity at this edge, tangential to the path. This is the velocity at this edge, tangential to the path. Okay, so therefore, now you see this velocity is different, this velocity is different. You mean to say the velocity value is same, the speed value is same, magnitude is same, but the directions are different. Now, what is acceleration? Acceleration A is equal to V2 minus V1 divided by time taken. Time taken from here to here, I have taken this one second. You can take two seconds also. Okay, now V2 and V1, what is V1? V1 is this velocity, which is this velocity. Now, V1 and V2 are two vectors. I need to represent this by vectors over here. And when I write like this, now what is V2? Now, what I have to do is, what I will do is, okay, this subtraction of two vectors. I'll come to mathematics now. Okay, I will now write this as V2 plus of minus V1 divided by divided by T. Okay, I'm not writing two here. Okay, so therefore, I'm adding two vectors, V2 and minus V1 vector. How do I add? What is V2 vector? V2 vector is like this. V2 vector is like this. What is V1 vector? V1 vector is like this. Okay, I'll write V1 vector like this. V1 vector is this. Then, but we want to add V2 and minus V1, which means what? minus V1 vector should be like this over here. Now I want to add this vector and this vector. And when I add this vector, how does it look like? One vector would be like this. The other vector would be like this. The resultant here 
would be like this also. Now you see, where is this resultant here in this diagram? The resultant, see, see one vector is like this. One vector is like this. I made a mistake. Uh, V2 is like this. Minus V1 is like this. Final vector minus initial vector. Just a moment, let me check it out. V2 is like this, V1 is like this, minus V1 is like this. So now I will push this one. Hey, I made a mistake, I made a mistake. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is my V2, this is my V2. This minus V1 I will write like this. This minus V1 I will write like this. The sum of these two vectors is given by the triangle, which is like this over here. Now take this line and put it over here. Can you see, it is along this line, right? So what is this now? This is your acceleration. What acceleration? The radial acceleration, right? Why radial acceleration? Because this is the acceleration which is directed towards the center of the circle, which is along the radius. That's what we call as radial acceleration. Now, what do you call this radial acceleration as? There's one more name to it. Do you remember what is this? In circular motion, we call this as centripetal acceleration, right? Centripetal acceleration. So therefore, this centripetal acceleration comes from the definition of centripetal force, okay? What is centripetal force? Everyone knows centripetal force is nothing but mv squared divided by r. Right? If you have learned a bit of rotation somewhere in your previous classes or maybe in the previous chapter you have learned circular motion you have learned. So this is what you have got. Now centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration is nothing but acceleration is nothing but remove this m. So you get this as v squared divided by r. Right? v squared by r. Now can this be equal to 4? It cannot be. Because see, this alpha is nowhere figuring it out. So therefore, first we need to find out v. What is r? r is a distance. Which distance? This distance. You need to find out the value of V. How do I find the value of V? Big question now, once again. How do I find the value of V? V, 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 V. How do I find the value of V? That's a question over here. Okay. Now, to get the value of V, I need to get the value of omega. Because now we are talking about rotation here. So what I will do is, V is equal to R omega. I know this. So I write this as R square omega square divided by R square, uh, divided by R. Okay. So I'll cancel this. And thus, I'll get this as r omega square over here. Now, r is already known to you. Omega, you need to find. Now, where do you get omega? I'm not given the omega value here, right? Now, let us read the question once again. Okay, is there hidden anywhere over here? Find the radial and angular acceleration, tangential acceleration of the particle at a distance of 1 centimeter. Okay, and so on. So, we can get. Now, what is this omega over here? Omega is nothing but the omega final. Okay. So, therefore, we can get omega f is equal to omega i plus alpha into t. What alpha is this? Is it radial or tangential? This is neither radial nor tangential. Remember this. Okay. This alpha is nothing but the net value. What is net? Total value. What is total? Resultant value. Okay. Why total and resultant two terms? Reason is because alpha is also a vector. Okay. So therefore, so maybe tangential acceleration is like this. Sorry, uh, radial acceleration is like this. Tangential acceleration is like this. Sum of these two it comes like this. This is the value of alpha that I have referring. Okay. It is not equal to your tangential or radial over here. It is a resultant vector. Okay. So therefore, now what I will do is now this I can substitute omega i is equal to 0 plus this value of alpha 4 and at the end of time, time is also given 4 into 1. So therefore, I will get the value omega final is equal to 4. 4 radian per second. Right. Is it radian? Yeah, radian. 4 radian per second. Now, what have we got? Final angular velocity. Okay, I'll substitute here. Now, what is value of r? 1 centimeter, which is 10 power minus 2. Multiplied by, what is 4? 4 square, which is be 16. Okay, when I substitute this, uh, I get the answer as, what is the unit here? What is it we are referring to? We are referring to acceleration. Acceleration should be meter per second square. Or I can now write this as 16 centimeter per second square. Let me repeat once again for those who have still not got a catch of this. Okay, so now we need to find out the radial acceleration, which is AR, and tangential acceleration, which is AT. Now, is anything given here? Nothing is given here. Now, what is being given to you? Only the alpha net. What is alpha net? The resultant acceleration is given to you. You need to find from here this one. Now, how do you find? We know that the radial acceleration is given by the formula V squared divided by R, not M. Okay. V squared divided by R. To get this value, you should get the value of V over here. Now, how do I get the value of V? We know that the linear acceleration can be related to angular, so linear velocity can be related to angular velocity by the formula V equal to R omega. Okay. 
So I substitute this value r square into omega square divided by r. So this r and this square cancels away. I get r into omega square. Now what omega is this? Initial velocity, a final velocity. What it is? It is a final velocity. Why final angular velocity? Reason is because it says at the end of first second. It's not at the beginning, right? See, there's a constant acceleration here. It cannot be initial also because initial we know it is zero. When there is a radial acceleration, it has to be final over here. At t equal to one second. So towards it, we need to find what is the final angular velocity. So what we do, we go to this step and we find out what is the final angular velocity, which is I put omega f equal to omega i plus alpha t. Where did I get this equation? The equations of motion. Why equation of motion? Because acceleration is constant. Which acceleration? Linear or angular? Angular acceleration is constant. How do you get this equation? We use v equal to a u plus a t and we compare these two because it's a rotation. We just replace the analogous quantities. So based on this, you got the value of d. You put zero here, you put alpha equal to four, t equal to one, you got this answer. Then you substituted this value of omega for omega f in this expression. So finally, you got the centripetal acceleration or so-called radial acceleration. What is radial acceleration now? It is 16 centimeter per second square. Now, the problem doesn't end here. The problem, once again, continue. Tangential acceleration. Some students have mentioned tangential acceleration equal to zero, radial acceleration equal to four. Because they thought, I have not given that the particle is flying. Okay, I will not give you also. Right? So the work of a physicist or your IIT problems or JEA problems are either to convince you or to confuse you. So you need to decide, okay, what I should do. Okay. Now, now you need to find out tangential acceleration. How do I find tangential acceleration? Tangential acceleration, AT, is given by delta V divided by T. Okay, delta V divided by T. Now, how do I find delta V? What is delta V over here? Okay, so delta V, so what is the method? How do you do it now? How do you do it? How do you do it? It is. So we know that. Can we get the value of delta V here? Delta V cannot be got over here. How do I find? Now, um, you have already found out the value of omega here. Okay, what is omega? Omega F here. Now, let me write down this. What is delta V? V final minus V initial divided by time taken. Now, what is V final? V final is nothing but related to omega F by the formula R times omega F. R times omega F. What is V initial? R times omega I. What is omega I? Zero, because started from rest. So, I'll put this is equal to zero divided by time taken. What is time taken? Once, one second, one second. I'll substitute this. What is R? R is a distance, one centimeter, 10 power minus two meters. Multiplied by omega final, we already found four, four. So this should now be equal to four into 10 to the power of minus two. What is the unit? This is acceleration, linear. This should be meter per second square. Or I can just say this is four centimeter per second square, right? So therefore, now we have got the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration together. I hope you understood this. See, but don't again tell me, Say the 16 plus 4 should give you 4. Why is it not equal to 4? The reason is because here it is angular acceleration. Okay. Net angular acceleration. Here you have got the centripetal acceleration, radial acceleration separately, and the angular, sorry, the tangential acceleration separately. The sum of these two cannot be equal to that. I hope you like this video. Thank you, friends, for watching this video until the end. And if you like, do share and subscribe to my channel for further updates. I hope it was not too fast. Uh, anyway, if it is too fast, do comment on the YouTube so that we will get to know and I can slow down my pace. Thank you. Thank you very much.